everybody's making a big deal. Oh God, he's he he said words like, oh, let's put him in an electric chair. <clears throat> well, yeah, the word was bad back in the 20s, 30s, and 40s, and 50s, and 60s, and 70s. But now it's just a common, it's just a common slang. A man named Tom Coleman, an undercover narcotics officer who arrested 46 people, nearly all of them black, on charges of being cocaine dealers and sent many of them to prison for a total of 750 years. That was until the governor of Texas stepped in and pardoned them after a judge accused Tom Coleman of being a liar who falsified evidence, a thief, and a racist. West Texas wastelands, populations about 4,500 of which 10% or so is black. A desolate farm town of some 5,000 people which has fallen on hard economic times. The money to hire Coleman came from the U.S. Department of Justice as part of a $500 million effort to fight the war on drugs in rural America. The year is 1999, the month is July. 10% of Tulia's adult black community was arrested and charged with selling drugs. Like about 10%, Tulia's entire black population had been taken into custody for selling drugs, all on the word of one white undercover cop, a sheriff named Tom Coleman, who called himself T.J. Dawson. You consider yourself to be a racist? No, sir. Do you see how some people might hear what you say and think that you are a racist and that you simply railroaded dozens of people because of their race? That's been said, yes, sir. But that wasn't the case. He had spent about 18 months making supposedly small purchases of cocaine. The first defendants to face justice were quickly convicted in eight separate trials by nearly all white juries. Only one of the jurors was black. I believe they already had a guilty verdict before any of us even went to court. 46 drug kingpins were eventually sentenced to a total of 756 years in state prison, all on the word of Tom Coleman. One of Tulia's black residents got five consecutive 99-year terms. And remember, the so-called drug deals, if they even happened, or for grams, half grams, eight balls. So I'm sure it was no surprise that this cop was white, but uh, what might be surprising is that he really didn't uh, keep much evidence. For the most part, the evidence was his word on the stand. He did have some samples of powder cocaine, which often were very, very Deluded. They were all given harsh sentences ranging from 20 to 341 years in prison. Even though the arrests had turned up no cocaine, no drug paraphernalia, no weapons, no money, or any other signs of drug dealing. And what were you charged with? Delivery, three counts, control substance to an undercover, Tom Coleman. Delivery of 3.1 grams of and they gave me 60 years. He said I sold them three eight bottles of powder, manufacture and deliver. They were rousted out of bed, paraded in front of local television cameras in handcuffs, many of them half-dressed. And Sheriff Tom Coleman actually got honored in 1999 as the Texas Lawman of the Year for all his uh, excellent undercover work in Chulia. But by 2000, um, Sheriff Tom's uh, persona started to unravel and so did the cases of the so-called Tulia 46. One of the court appointed lawyers came to me and said can you help out? Not for pay, just can you take a look at what happened? Went to the courthouse and I said hey there was this guy Tom Coleman that worked here. You guys know anything? I'm just like the clerk at the county. Clerk said really Tom Coleman huh? I said yeah. She goes oh honey. So she brings back this file that's like that thick from one of his, he was in a custody case down there. He had been working there as a cop and then I found out the whole thing. What he had gotten in trouble for there, that he would pull people over and shake them down. I mean, this guy's like a complete criminal. No, I didn't intentionally target anyone in Tulia. It just, it turned out that way. It's just the where the road led me. I didn't know no Tom Coleman. I didn't know this man from, man. Now some of them 
pled not guilty, went to trial, and they were completely destroyed. He was a gypsy cap. He moved from town to town. He never stayed in one place long because of his impulsive behavior, which earned him a bad reputation. He was only making $17,000 a year as an undercover cop when he worked in Tulia, which is kind of a shockingly low wage. Among the irregularities in Sheriff Coleman's investigation was the lack of any audio or video surveillance recordings corroborating that he bought drugs from a single arrested or convicted person. And when the dozens of people were arrested and their homes were searched, there was no drugs, no weapons, and no unusual amounts of money found in any of the 46 so-called drug kingpins as the newspaper referred to them's home. As for Sheriff Coleman himself, uh, he had come to Tulia after a job in nearby Swisher County where he'd run off on about $6,700 in bills he'd run up with local merchants and there was actually a warrant out for his arrest and while he was working undercover in Tulia, he was actually picked up and taken into custody by the neighboring county and his mother had to pay his debts to get the sheriff out of jail so he could go back to working. This is the kind of guy that the Texas uh, Drug Task Force had worked. The disclosures about faults with uh, Coleman's drug investigation and his questionable character culminated in Governor Rick Perry's pardon of 35 of the Tulia defendants in August of 03. And then there was a $6 million settlement in 04. And then in 05, Sheriff Tom got put on trial and convicted of perjury. During uh, the various trials and uh, retrials, Coleman made no secret of his frequent usage of the N-word. But now it's just a common, it's just a common slang. Billions of dollars over the years funding drug task forces in small towns like Tulia. The more arrests and convictions a task force makes, the more money it receives the following year. It said uh, Sheriff Coleman got convicted of perjury himself. And this happened out of Lubbock, Texas, where a jury found him guilty of one count of aggregated perjury during a 2003 evidentiary hearing. So the case was in 05, the perjury case, but it was about something he did in 03. It was about him being on the stand testifying about what he was doing in Tulia. And during that hearing, Coleman lied and testified that he didn't know he'd been indicted for stealing $6,700 from Cochran County, Texas store owners until later. In convicting Coleman, the jury relied on evidence that included Coleman's signature on a waiver of arraignment dated June 1st. 1998, two months prior to him swearing under oath that he knew about it. An Amarillo detective named Jerry Massengill testified that he conducted an extensive background check of Coleman, including interviewing authorities and former associates in Cochran County, and that's the place uh, Sheriff Tom was stealing at before he came to Tulia. Just to recap here, Sheriff Tom is assigned to this West Texas Drug Task Force. You got in Swisher County, where Tulia is, you got this sheriff that knew that Tom Coleman was uh, suspected at that point of, of running up unpaid debts, basically, and disappearing, stealing from store owners in the very county that he worked. So I guess while he had his sheriff's badge on, he would go into stores, get stuff, say he needed it for an investigation, and just never pay, and he's still hired the guy. Governor Rick Perry ended up pardoning all of those that got convicted, but some of them lost a few years to the system. Coleman was called upon to defend his conduct before a state judge who was hearing appeals from some of those convicted in the Tulia day. He said that your testimony was, quote, absolutely riddled with perjury, that you were entirely unbelievable under oath, and that you are, quote, the most devious, non-responsive law enforcement witness this court has witnessed in 25 years on the bench in Texas. That's pretty harsh. Yes, sir, but that's his opinion. But that one judge on one day this past summer set the Tulia defendants free. Welcome home. Among them were Joe Moore, yeah. 
Kizzy White, and Freddie Brooken Jr. Finally, man. I know we can't have those three and a half years back, but we're gonna start where it left off. As for Tom Coleman, he was recently indicted for perjury. He's also under investigation by the FBI for possible civil rights violations. How has this affected you? Well, it's took my career away from me, but I'm surviving. I'm taking care of my family, I'm paying my bills, and I'm not doing dope. I'm not selling dope to do it with either. So this story and Tulia, Texas, and Tom Coleman in the 46 incarcerated and then exonerated people is an update. And Coleman actually got interviewed maybe about a year ago for a paper in a kind of an obscure small newspaper. And I, I read that article and then it had me, um, led me to research some other things about the case. And uh, like in so many things that get a lot of run in the press, a lot of people made money off of what happened. There were several people wrote books. It was about five million settlements paid out. The lawyers got 1.5 million. Lots of newspapers got sold. Uh, people, you know, it's very easy to write outraged articles about what happened down there, and rightfully so. But of course, the full truth is a little more nuanced and disturbing, actually, because it's easy for people to virtue signal by saying, oh, look at this instance of clear-cut racism, and I'm a good person because Tom Coleman is bad. But uh, quite a few of the people admitted that they were involved in drug dealing. Uh, Coleman's tactics of not having wearing a wire or having any cooperating evidence was legal under Texas law at the time. The law was changed mainly because of the Coleman case. So Coleman wasn't really doing anything abnormal, which is more disturbing. And at the beginning of the story, it talked about the money to pay Coleman came from a $500 million grant to fight drugs in rural America. Well, that was back in 1999. And as we know, uh, in the mid 2000s, the prescription uh, crisis swept through rural America first, and then the H, and now fentanyl and meth, and rural America is much more beset with drugs than it ever has been before, as America is in general. Uh, disturbing the war on drugs is more and more of a disaster. Everything we try to do, the legalization of marijuana, uh, hasn't resulted in the tax revenue because it's just made the black market larger. It's helped push the cartels south of the border more because, uh, you know, say in the year 2000, about half of the Sinaloa guys' uh, revenue was coming from marijuana. Well, they had to replace that with first H, and then uh, now they can make their own vent and meth with uh, chemicals that we can't really restrict because it's too easy to make. Now, of course, these are unforeseen consequences, but consequences nonetheless. Why such a massive demand by especially Americans to do so much drugs? I mean, the amount of marijuana smoke, I mean, just a lot of people are getting very high every day. Uh, Tom Coleman was more of a incompetent, I think, than anything. His um, one of the things used against him that made him look bad was his girlfriend, his ex-girlfriend, saying he was a current caring member of the Ku Klux Klan. Well, that was taken out of context. He was because he was doing an undercover case against meth dealers, and he joined. Shows you what type of people are cooking and selling meth in the South. These guys were like carried around KKK membership cards. And he put them all in jail. He made lots of cases in other places against a lot of white people. He was an incompetent person. Like we said in the story, he's a guy who ran up bills while he was a sheriff and skipped town. Deadbeat uh, on his child support, I guess. Um, and all the N-word usage at the trial was introduced. Uh, he was bragging about, you know, his the, 
the well, he made his inroads into the black community in Tulia because he couldn't get any of the white or Latino dealers to sell to him. So a very poor, he got some job, and there was like an older, like a 60-some-year-old black man who worked with him doing heavy labor for minimum wage, and he ingratiated himself to him by helping him clean his yard and buying him lunch and all that stuff and really befriended the guy. This is what people do to get into the undercover world. Took a weak person, like an old man, probably just happy to have a friend, and this guy took him around and said, oh, this is time. He's white, but he's my N-word. And then that's when the opening statement that Coleman said of the N-word is just uh, everyday usage. He wasn't saying he sat around and said it like that. He said it was being used about him. And his, the full quote was that he said, my first name was N-word, because as people call it, just to add a detail, but... Uh, so I think the real problem was, you know, just blindly throwing money at, hey, let's go, the problem is let's arrest poor people because that's who sells small amounts of drugs. Now, some of those people in Tulia were totally innocent. Some admitted to being some type of drug dealers. That's here nor there. Uh, putting people in prison for a bunch of time, even if they did sell somebody an eight ball is obviously, even if you don't care about them as humans, uh, I think the the property taxes of the county that Tulia is in were raised 6% just to cover the payouts of the civil and the cost of, or of the cost of having the people in the county jail and of the civil settlements. And, and, and the Coleman salary was paid by the feds, but the cost of putting the people in the county jail, the rest of them weren't paid by the feds. And there were 50 children orphaned, both parents in jail, at least temporarily. So tremendous amount of, when you put anyone in jail, and when you put both people in the family in jail, even if they're guilty, I'm not saying they were, all type of cascading consequences. And, uh, you know, I'm worried about crime in America, cause like, Right now, like, who would want to even be a police officer, even if you believe in it? Things have gotten so expensive, especially in the big cities, like, it just doesn't make sense unless you're planning on being corrupt or something's wrong with you and you want to you wanna do bad things to people. And then, of course, the fact everyone's hanging out with a cell phone waiting to, uh, you know, catch you doing something bad or something that appears bad and in your life, maybe justifiably, maybe not. I think uh, we're only at the beginning of the age of drug problems in America, and we're at the beginning of an era of a rise in crime. Our profit American dope. Coleman told me he used the N-word to fit in with blacks during his investigation and admits he also used it among his white friends. The word mm. Yes, sir, I've used that word. I've used it a lot. Yeah, what's up? Is that a greeting you'd use with me? Oh, no, sir, not you. 